మోస్ట్ వినరబుల్ మహానాయక తేరస్ ప్రొఫెసర్ వినరబుల్ మరుగొల్లాగమ్మ ఉపరాతన తీర ప్రొఫెసర్ వినరబుల్ ఇలగల్ శ్రీనివాస తీర అండ్ సీనియర్ లెక్చరర్ మావతగమ్మ భీమానంద తీర అండ్ ఆల్సో అదర్ డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ టీచర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద బుడ్డిస్ట్ అండ్ పాలి యూనివర్సిటీ ప్రొఫెసర్ చాందిమ విజయ్ భండారి ఇస్ ఆల్సో ఆన్ ద స్టేజ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వండర్ఫుల్ ఈవినింగ్ ఐ థింక్ ఐ హ్యావ్ బీన్ ఓనర్డ్ టు ఎక్స్టెండ్ మై బెస్ట్ కాంప్లిమెంట్స్ టు హిస్ హోలీనెస్ దలై లామా ఆన్ దిస్ స్పెషల్ డే టుడే ఈస్ ద ఎయిటీ సెవెంత్ బర్త్డే ఆఫ్ హిస్ హోలీనెస్ దలై లామా సో ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు బిగిన్ మై స్పీచ్ విష్ ఇన్ లాంగ్ లైఫ్ అండ్ గుడ్ హెల్త్ టు హిస్ హోలీనెస్ దలై లామా i think uh, it's a wonderful thing that uh, in recent times that we come to know a lot about tibet tibet and tibet people tibet culture tibetan culture and tibet basically and tibetan buddhism and also dalai lama so uh, there was a period that we uh, that we did not know very much we didn't hear uh, very much about dalai lama uh, personally i have not been uh, to tibet <laughs> i have not seen Uh, his holiness dalai lama but i have been into india several times but i have not seen him uh, i mean this is uh, uh, i mean it, it's not it's not because of the fact that i don't like to go to tibet but it is the fact that you know we have all these you know uh, political issues in the real things um actually i am uh, to talk about uh, the the uh, about dalai his holiness dalai lama as a recipient of globe uh, uh, nobel peace prize now uh in he went to pro- I, i i don't like to talk uh, uh, very much about the political struggles that we, that were taking place in tibet from 1940s 90 end of 19 uh, uh, from the end of 1940s there were a lot of you know uh, struggles and uh, you know you know issues uh the final outcome of those issues was that uh, dalai lama came to india and uh, he was living there uh, and finally he went to the west dalai lama went to west in 1973 and then from that time he was growing in the west he was noticed very much in the western world uh, so why was that now he was his figure and his character what was he saying now everything was uh, considerably you know noticed by the western people that is something very interesting so the outcome the f- i mean the 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 in uh, 1987 as a recognition of his special character and the function in the western world spreading this noble message throughout the world especially in the western world he was awarded nobel peace prize in the, the documents in the uh, pertaining to uh, in the in the in the, the authentic documents pertaining to nobel peace prize it is mentioned uh, for uh, the, the 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 reason for awarding nobel peace prize is mentioned uh, and it was for advocating peaceful solutions uh, based upon tolerance and mutual respect in order to preserve the historical and cultural heritage of his people so that is the that is that was the reason for advocating peaceful solution based upon tolerance and mutual respect in order to preserve the historical and cultural heritage of this people looking from the cultural perspective actually what happened in the tibet was a devastation okay now we know the the glorious you know the buddhist history of tibet people now we have come across uh, how you know the number of professor knows very well large number of buddhist text came to tibet from different you know indian uh, regions and they were translated into tibetan tibetan language was very rich and it is a very rich culture even today we have come across you know the tibetan sages sometimes meditating and practicing you know uh, as ascetics in uh, isolate places for many s- years 12 years or twi- pro- <laughs> more than that even so some you know and uh, and then and and also the, uh, the 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 tibetan practices very rich rituals tibetan tankas and all that the worshipers and all these things were discussed a little while ago so all these things composed a very rich tibetan culture so now actually the it was an unfortunate thing that the tibet people lost their cultural you know uh, 
land uh, but he was actually now it it is a very difficult thing for a person to bear all these things he lost his supreme position actually tibet was a kind of ecclesiastical government i don't know whether you understand this word ecclesiastical government is a kind of religious form of government but i i i asked from uh, professor whether we can use uh, this word and professor said it's, it's kind of ecclesiastical government because he, fro- he was dalai lama was a kind of i mean the i mean was was in i mean had a political you know position in tibet so he lost that position and the people in tibet tibet tibetan people spread throughout the world and they lost their cultural heritage uh, the rich culture the rich textual tradition the rich uh, rituals of tibetan people but it was a very peaceful you know mechanism to find solution uh, to the to his problems that he uh, worked out so in his speech in his uh, Uh, Nobel Peace Prize talk he mentions I know I am special <laughs> because by that time the western people had noticed him very well and he was a very you know kind of you know a wonderful person he's a well reputed person in the western world as a buddhist spiritual leader and he say I know I am special but he says I believe this is a quotation I believe the prize is a recognition of the true value of recognition of patriotism love compassion and non-violence which i try to practice in accordance with the teachings of the buddha and great sages of india and tibet so that was what, what i was talking about little while ago so the india you know, uh, our most venerables were talking about the sages and the you know the intellectuals india produced and in the same way In Tibet they are intellectuals Dalai Lama himself was an intellectual Dalai Lama himself was a great scholar actually most of the time we don't discuss about Dalai Lama the scholarship of Dalai Lama but he was a kind of scholar i mean a very specific scholar the knowledge he has about different you know the philosophies of different traditions of buddhism is immense if you i have actually i have not met him but i have heard him talking about the philosophy the you know the deep philosophies of buddhism about sarvastivada yoga acharya sautrantika dharma gupta so and so forth so the way how he presents this idea is wonderful so it's a wonderful scholar uh, you know the lai lama was a wonderful scholar apart from being a spiritual leader uh, in the west so uh, so there is another point that i am i, I like to you know uh, to present at uh, uh, at this occasion that is why he became uh, a special person uh, a reputed person a recognized person in the western world i think this is something that we have to think about now venerable venerable uh, uh, venerable professor sirinivas uh, lenagal sirinivas hamdur was talking about uh, the outward appearance of his holiness dalai lama in our uh, tradition pali tradition we say if you are really practicing okay you should have your outward appearance very smooth and nice <laughs> i mean that is a qualification that you have to have outwardly externally why the reason is when you are in your practice what is happening internally you are becoming special person i mean there is there is a psychological transformation taking place so the one of the thing happening in your bodily uh, inner body is that the pasaddhi you know what is uddhacha the complexity of mind goes down disappears and pasaddi the boyans you know appears so then what is uh, pasaddi actually the smoothness of mind and body it creates creates kind of you know even external beauty external beauty is not discouraged in buddhism right it was it was very much encouraged in buddhism if you look at pali tradition there are several contexts in vinaya where external beauty is uh, you know uh, was uh, encouraged by even the buddha you now even in case of monks the buddha said that uh, this uh, the beauty now there are contexts that the buddha is talking about the, the external appearance the external beauty the external pleasantness of the monks even so he had that one not only that he w- he presented the teaching of the buddha in very simple terms in very simple terms and he was very convenient to the western world he the way of thinking 
uh, his uh, kind of uh, commitment in that society and how he dealt the people in the western society was absolutely uh, remarkable so venerable uh, our uh, vaskadue uh, mahindatero was talking about this thing sometimes uh, now we have this question why uh, was only dalai lama you know recognized as the spiritual that kind of person that spiritual uh, that uh, you know uh, great in this western world so these are the qualifications so this commitment the humanity rather than all other things the associations based on humanity is the most uh, uh, wonderful thing in the world so uh, our smile the small smile on the face can do a lot of things uh, our uh, you know our compassion can do a lot to the humanity uh, and uh, you know best result in can bring about best results he says now finally i would like to quote again venerable dalai lama's uh, you know speech and end up my story speech uh, this is speech again i would say that this speech is the speech given by dalai lama at the uh, uh, oslo university assembly hall on the day that he got his nobel peace prize he say we are trying to end suffering of our people not to inflict suffering on others so this is what we have forgotten today when in the two world wars there were two world wars in the world now again there is a war between you know russia and uh, western world so what is happening is that uh, i mean rather than avoiding conflicts what we are doing is we are sort of cherishing conflict and we are inflicting suffering upon many you know uh, many nations and uh, thousands hundreds and millions of people and finally he says that happiness comes from a sense of inner happiness the true happiness comes from a sense of inner happiness so the real happiness i mean this is pertaining to buddhism the real happiness that we can experience is not all these external things i think the beauty of dalai lama the beauty of uh, dalai lama is nothing else that he experienced and he knew the true way the right way of experience this inner nature so that is why his internal and external kind of behavior was beautiful and he made himself a great person uh thank you very much for inviting me to this talk uh wish you all the best and teruan saranai